Sounded good, Dante? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Chestermere Christian Fellowship. Just uh, welcome those who are visiting and welcome anyone who watches online later. We're glad you could be here this morning. And yeah, as usual, I think our, our numbers are maybe a little bit thin. Maybe it's, a little, still a little, it's not quite summertime, but sometimes people are away and then they, they sometimes also drift in, in the next few minutes. I'm going to read. I'm going to read Psalm 100 as our psalm of our opening psalm or psalm of praise. And then I'm going to open in prayer for the service, and then the praise team will lead us in the first uh, series of songs. This is Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. There's a couple of lines in there which are very similar, which I think are important. Okay? The, he is God, and he is good. Okay? And I know just some of the things going on maybe in some people's lives and your own lives, but that's just, for me, that's a comfort. He is God. He is all sovereign and all powerful, and he is good. And so I'm just going to open in prayer just for the service. So, Lord God, you are good. Your faithfulness endures. You are mighty. You are powerful, Lord. You are are a comfort, Lord, in our times of trouble. You give strength to us, Lord. And God, this morning I pray that we may open our hearts in praise. No matter what's going on, Lord, we've had a good week. We've had a hard week. We've had a medium week, Lord. I pray we could just lift up our hearts with joy and for for saving us, God, for your mercy, for your love, for sending Jesus to this earth uh, to die on the cross for our sins. And for the new life and the hope of your return, Jesus, when all tears are wiped away, Lord, for all these things, Lord, I just pray we could open our hearts this morning. So God, I just pray that everything we do would be fitting and acceptable in your sight today, Lord. I pray your Holy Spirit would stir us up and would be the authority in this meeting. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I invite the praise team forward.
worship the triune God, our Father in heaven, the Lord God, our Jesus, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to sing that in this song. Before, as you're sitting down, just take a moment to, to greet those around you or even a, a little distance away from you as you feel led. I have some visitors, I have some people returning. Okay. And now, oh, no problem. No, 
And now we're going to have a time of announcements. Just uh, some things going on week to week here. Thank you, Don. Next slide, please. Okay, so the Hope Mission Food Collection, which has already started, you've seen it in the foyer, that goes until next week, October 1st, and then yeah, we'll be, it'll be our joy to, to come and bring it to them as an offering of food. Uh, that has started, Healing Hearts Bible Study, so uh, I don't know if anyone can still sign up for that. Maybe it's possibly, anyway, you could talk to Elena, except she's in Dallas, I think, right? Okay, so, okay. so anyway, any... Questions uh, regarding that, even though it has started, please talk to Elena or possibly Krista could also answer the questions too, so she's coming back. Next, please. Prayer night this Tuesday, 7 p.m. Um, as usual, we, we gather, we sing some songs, we lay out prayer requests before the Lord, both our own and our congregation, our nation, and um, our world, and then we pray for about an hour, 45 minutes. Women's Bible study. Happening Wednesday, oh, this is the, am I getting it right? No, yeah, the AM, don't want to mix them up. This is the AM one, that's still happening, going strong. I think this next week is Bathsheba. Okay, trying to stay on top of it. And then this other, Wednesday evening, there's another Bible study on the book of Esther, uh, which has started and which will go, I think maybe one week more than that. Which is the week it's, it's not happening, this, this past week? Yeah. Right, okay. So yeah, it is definitely happening this Wednesday and Wednesdays following up until sometime in October. 25th. 25th. 18 plus 7. Uh, the men's Bible study. I know we're getting a little, uh, the women had a head start on this, but we're starting as well too. October 4th, that's a Wednesday morning at my house, which we did last fall. And then in the winter, we switched it to Tuesday, but it seemed to work better on Wednesdays, so arrive at about 9.15, and then we start formally at 9.30, and try to be done by 11. Um, but yeah, many of you are familiar with that. If you're unfamiliar with that, you can come out to it. And if, there, if you really want a men's Bible study and you can't make that timing, talk to me, because if there are enough men who want a Bible study and can't do Wednesday mornings, we can, we can add an evening session sometime. Just to, um, For the moment, I haven't heard anyone request that, but you're, you're quite... Please do that if you want to. Men's breakfast this coming Saturday. I usually have a good turnout for that, you know, 15, 20, sometimes even a few more. Mark is the cook. That's, uh, that's a, a big draw that I think brings a lot of the men. But there's a good fellowship as well, too, good ministry time. And I don't think it's on there, but yesterday was the first ladies of the breakfast. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So I heard, yeah, about 15 people are around that? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, perfect, yeah. And she did a great job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, way to go, daughter. Okay. It just took someone to say, well, why don't we do a ladies' breakfast? Yeah, why not? <laughs> it was that simple. Who would have knew? Okay. We're planning for, I don't know if Ed has more to say than this, planning for a work B Saturday, October 7th, 9 to noon, just some outdoor, indoor projects, just some tidying up, repairing um, things to do. Ed, do you want to say any more about that? Or Ben? Okay, great. And next, please. Okay, and then we're at the offering. So um, I'll, just, I'll read a scripture that I often read, and then I'll pray for the offering. But I uh, just thank you for those of you who, who regularly support this church and... Uh, you can do that by e-transfer or by the offering box in the back. And if you're a guest and you're visiting, there's no obligation. You're, you're our guest, but again, for those who regularly attend. And this is the encouragement from God's word, Proverbs 11, verse 24. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper, and whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. So that's God's encouragement. It's, in a way, his command as well, too, to be generous, to give back a portion of what he has given you, and he promises to continue to bless you. So if you're faithful with that little giving back, he'll trust you with more. And so I'm just going to pray and give thanks for the offering and God's generosity. 
So God, we thank you, yes, for your goodness, your, your loving generosity to us, Lord. Thank you for everything you have given us, Lord. And I just pray you would continue to release our hearts, Lord, that we would give back a portion of what you've given us, Lord. That we would uh, enjoy sharing with others, Lord, meeting the needs of others and contributing, God. And thank you for your promise that as we do that, you will continue to bless us and give us even more. We thank you for the finances of this church, Lord. We thank you for the healthy, stable financial situation we have here. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I think that might be the last announcement, is it? Oh, no. What am I saying? Happy birthdays. Okay. Uh, Faye, it's your birthday tomorrow. Yes, and is Mike's was yesterday. Is Mike and Emily here? No, they were here last week. I don't see them. Okay, so Mike Sampson, Mike and Emily have just been joining us. His birthday was yesterday. I guess we missed it. And then Norm will be Wednesday. Yeah, okay. So, Faye, you're the only one present, so please stand and we will sing to you. Happy birthday to Okay, and there's no anniversaries being celebrated this week. Okay, now we're back to the praise team to lead us in this next series of songs. This song, um, yeah, my mic's on, okay. This song sings, a, it ha has a happy, joyful beat to it, but it sings actually about some of the things that we worry about as human beings, but it reminds us that we just keep trusting my Lord because he will never fail. Hands together. I just keep trusting my Lord as we walk along. Trusting my Lord as he gives me a song. Oh, the storm clouds dark in the sky, or the heavenly train. I just keep trusting my Lord, he will never fail. He's a faithful Sad. 
Well, thank you. Praise team for leading us in those. You, Darcy, Nola, Raina. And I hear you're going to be up for one more song at the end, too. For the closer. Okay. Okay. I'd just like to release the children now for, for Sunday school. For I, I like it. Sunday school, it's also like being called children's church. So we, we learn here upstairs and they learn downstairs. But it's about the same God, same Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we we'll bless you, release you now. think they're learning about someone's dramatic encounter with the Lord Jesus. I remember, right? Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and pray for your spirit to guide them and stir them up downstairs. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to go to a time now of congregational prayer. Just uh Whatever needs and concerns we have, we, with me as the spokesperson, we will bring them before the Lord. Um, and then after that, we'll have the message of someone pray over me, and then we'll hear this week's message. So the, our missionary highlight, this is a, a ministry which we support, is the Dream Project in Mozambique. And what are their names again, Nola? I, I have never met them, so it's hard. The Ulianos. Yeah, they have a poster up there at the back. Um, that's the dream project in Mozambique. Okay. Other things that we can be praying for. Yes, Mark. Of course, yeah. And Heather? Oh, just the person she's traveling with, maybe. Okay. And that's later today, is it? Okay. For sure, Mark, yeah. Right. 
Yeah, well, and rain as well, too. So have we heard anything in the past 12 hours about our condition? Sorry, induced coma, and they're looking at what, sir? Okay, bringing her out of it. And that was a, like a, a diabetes-related, um, okay. We'll just, we'll lift up Holly, um, your mom, in prayer. I'm grateful she's under care of the doctors, but yeah, on, on the other side of that care, which is brought out, pray for her to be well. Yeah, other things. Uh, yes, Aurea. For sure, yeah. Yes, David. I pray for blessing on this congregation, on us, all our needs, all provision. Yes, Tom. So, uh, I shall be the bearer of news again, just as loud. Yeah, because I, I get to talk to Elizabeth, so I get the update. So, uh, so uh, things have changed a little bit from week to week, but the, uh, he's in palliative care now, and he's, uh, he's no longer conscious, and it's, uh, it may be a matter of days now. Um, likely, just again, that's the, the medical expectation, if I can put it in the right words, but keeping faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. But that's the situation. We may see his passing this week. Um, so that's a big change from a few weeks ago. It was three to six months, which was already a shock, right? And then um, and now an acceleration, really, of it with whatever the, the brain tumor and all the activity up there. And we are grateful that uh, I was talking to that Lynette, Elizabeth's sister, is here. Just It seems like an appointed time that God's hand was in this as well, too. And we're praying for Sarah to be able to arrive in time. Sarah. Yes, Sarah. Um, David, yes. How can we pray? Wow. Awesome. Thank you, David. Yeah, you, I met them this morning, so just I've moved from the Philippines to, to here to settle in Canada, and uh, yeah, we welcome you to this congregation and to Canada, and we have, hopefully have many weeks and months to get to know you more, but today is welcome. And Chester, because that was about six months ago, and he was, in a lot of ways, I was going to say left for dead, not expected to live is maybe the better way of saying it, yes, for everything, all the damage, and walking and talking. But it's been a long road, but that's sometimes what the Lord brings us along, a long road of recovery, but still a recovery. So thank you, David, for sharing that. Mark, I think you had a hand. Yeah. Connie, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Sure, Connie. Yeah, yeah we're praying he can come home. I, just a few weeks ago, we, we were able to visit with him at home. He was able to have a visit, but he, he can't get in and out of a car or a taxi without assistance. And I guess just some level of help is needed for that in and out of the wheelchair, um, which is, yeah, not... I want to say not easy to get. Anyway, it's, you can't always get that when you want that, or we're learning how to do that. So we'll put that before the Lord. Hopefully I expressed it well. Yes, surely. Okay. And she, Ruth Lee, yeah. And she... She had a fall, I think, earlier, some months ago, too. Was that her? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Want to be. All right. Oh, yes, Araya. Praise God. Pray for that. Yeah. Yeah. Good basketball team this year, too. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Some of the... We, we all walked alongside with, with you uh, some of that last year, too. So, oh, yeah. Praise God. You know, just some years, it just... Ah, it just feels more peaceful. You're not sure why. So, praise God that that's the case there. Okay. So, all these things. Let's, uh, let's come to our God in prayer. And, you know, the... The exhortation from Philippians 4, do not be anxious about any, anything, but by prayer and petition, bring your request before the Lord and the peace of Christ, which transcends all understanding, or the, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So we're looking for that peace, and uh, we believe we will receive that peace through prayer. So we come to him now. So Father God, thank you that you are our Father. Thank you that you are a good God, as we read from Psalm 100 this morning. You are good. Your faithfulness, your love endures forever, God. And though we, we have to walk through trials, Lord, we know that. We sang that. And yet, Lord, there's, there's a hope, there's a presence, there's an encouragement on what you have for us, Lord, which can never be taken away. And so we just cling to your love, your goodness, your overall plan, your mercy, God. And we bring several uh, petitions before you, God. We think of the Dream Project in Mozambique and just bless the Uliano family just as they support that. I just pray for safety for the, for the project, um, for the boys and girls who are there, Lord, and for the, uh, that they would have the resources, Lord, and just it would continue just to be a ministry. It would bring orphans into families and also raise them up to be godly men and women, God. Lord, I pray for the safe return, for traveling mercies for Elena and Heather. Just, I pray they were blessed by the, this, this time in Dallas, this uh, ministry training, Lord, that just God, we just trust that you have accomplished all the purposes you want to accomplish for Elena, for Heather, and for all the other attendees, Lord. And we just look forward to the continued fruit in the Healing Hearts ministry here. God, we pray for Holly in, in Norway, who's in an induced coma, Lord. And God, we do give thanks that, yeah, there's, that she's under sort of a controlled situation, that she's under care, Lord. The doctors have been able to attend to her, Lord. Lord, we especially pray for our today it looks like she'll be brought out of the out of the coma, Lord, and just pray that just, yeah, that everything is working well, Lord. We pray against any kind of sort of brain damage or injury there, Lord. We rebuke uh, the spirit of brain damage in the name of Jesus, Lord. We just speak health and healing and recovery for her, Lord. And whatever brought this on for Holly as well, too, just whatever just in her body or just whatever brought this on, we pray that this is never repeated, Lord. Pray that something is learned from this as well, too, that she never has this kind of a shock of just a, a high sugar um, bringing that about in her, Lord. Pray for a peace and healing and safety for her body, God. Lord, we pray for Araya, for, for housing, for her and her daughters, Lord. Pray for something convenient and close and affordable, just the right place, Lord, a place of your choosing and a place of your provision, Lord. Just may it meet all their needs, just and even just some things they hadn't anticipated, Lord. Sometimes you, you get a house and a few months in, you just realize, wow, I'm so glad we live here because of this, this, and this, Lord. And I just pray for that kind of a story for, for Araya and her girls, Lord. We give thanks as well as praise for Araya for, at the school there, at the middle school. God, thank you. It's just, it's different this year, Lord. There just, there's a peace, there's a grace uh, there that would just, 
maybe what was missing last year and missed a lot of challenges and, and tension, God. So we thank you for that. We bless the teachers, Lord. Bless the students. Bless their learning, their instruction. And just, uh, yeah, pray that the, the students could just be, be blessed by the learning that they take on. And Lord, we pray for all the programs as well as the sports teams in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for a blessing on the congregation, Lord. There's just, yeah, all of us, Lord, need your love and care. And Lord, I just pray for all provisional needs, those needing a car or, or a home or just some, something in, in the material realm there, Lord. I pray that that would be met. Pray for health and healing, Lord, for those who need healing. Pray for relief from pain. And God, I just pray you would nourish us all spiritually as well too, Lord. Pray in our spiritual walk. We would get closer to you, Lord. We would do that together in, in community, but also individually, Lord. We would just learn who you are, God, and what your great love is for us and what your plan is for us. So God, I just pray for a blessing on the congregation. And God, thank you for, for forgiving our sins. Thank you we can have a clear conscience before you, Jesus, because you've paid for our sins and we find forgiveness in you. Let her pray for, for Mayanne. Pray for strength and love and encouragement for her in this time, Lord. Just, yeah, in a, in a few different directions, Lord. She's just, there's, there's griefs on, on her heart, Lord, and just even just recovering from surgery as well, too, Lord. So, Lord, may she also find, and I know she finds, just love and strength and support from the, from the congregation here, Lord. May we, be able, may we support her as you support her as well, God. And Lord, sort of paired with that as well, with, with Elizabeth and Chris, Lord. And the hard news of this week, Lord, um, that he's in palliative care. And it looks like the, the life that you've granted him on this earth, Lord, it's, it's not going to last much longer, Lord. That's just the, the expectation from a, a medical point of view, Lord. And so we pray, Lord, for your comfort, your, your peace, your mercy, your love, um, for Elizabeth, for for Lyn Lynette, for, for Laura, pray also that Sarah um, could come here um, just to, to make it in time, just to have a, a meaningful interaction with Chris, Lord, if this is indeed, um, if these are his last days, Lord. Again, Lord, we're, we're open to what you, you can do, Lord. We know you can heal. We know you can revive. We know you can resurrect. Lord. God, you can do anything. But if this is the time, Lord, that, that you're, you're calling them home, I'd say, um, let us pray just for all, all comfort that we need at this time, God especially for Elizabeth's mother. Lord, we do give thanks as well for your, your healing, for someone, for the story of Chester, Lord, who was not expected to live, who was so severely injured, Lord, who was in a coma, Lord, organ damage, structural damage, Lord, it's been months, but he is walking and talking and attending family events, Lord. So, God, uh, we thank you for that, and may we take encouragement from his story as well, too, that the God you heal, you preserve, you protect, you restore even when it looks like life is over um, for that person. Lord, I pray for Stanley and Connie, Lord. Just uh, pray you'd bring Stanley home, Lord. Thank you for your grace to him, Lord. You've, you've been good to him over these past several months as he has recovered from the stroke, Lord. But Lord, our, our hearts desires for him to be home and for him to be physically capable to be home. Lord, that you'd complete the healing in his body, especially in his right arm and just hands and just, just that side, Lord. That you'd bring it back to full function, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I just pray for your provision and your grace and just in terms of accessibility, Lord, we pray he can spend more time at home um, until the time that you bring him home, that he can be home again with his wife, Lord, in, this, in the home just right near us, God. We pray for Connie as well too, Lord. Just pray for, for her weariness, Lord, that you would give her strength. We thank you for your word from Isaiah. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, Lord. That's physical strength, Lord, as, as she waits on you. Yeah, God, just, uh, we, we pray to see him home. We want to see him also here on a Sunday. God, that you would make that happen and make it soon. We pray in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for your grace to, to Ruth Lee. Lord, she's 101 years old. Uh, she took a bad fall some months ago, but she's still going strong, Lord. And that's, Lord, there's a mystery in that. Why, how is it, what, what's the secret, Lord, of living to 100? We don't know. But Lord, we just, we credit your grace and your mercy is on her life, Lord, that just you have her alive still. Um, for such a time as this, Lord. And just bless her, Lord, just in all ways, in relationships, her physical health, and, and in her walk with you, God. And so, Lord, all, all these things we bring before you, and there are other just unnamed things, just things which weren't mentioned, or people who are absent, God. Um, God, we just fall upon your mercy, your love, your power, and your wisdom, Lord. You encourage us, Lord, to come before you with our requests, and he also encourages us to, uh, to trust you, to leave the, the outcome of the decisions in your hands. And Lord, and so we do that. Lord, you are good and you are God. And that makes all the difference, Lord, that is our comfort this morning. So 
We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask uh, Ed, maybe it's, I don't know, I forget whose turn it is. Could you come and pray for me, please, uh, before the message? And then we'll hear from God's word. A word of prayer. Father God, we're so thankful that we come in your house this day and hear your word and that you're using your servant, Pastor Vince, to deliver that message to us, Lord. We just pray you'd give him wisdom, open his heart to the Lord Jesus, and may you speak through him, Lord God, this day. We ask your blessing on him, send the Holy Spirit upon him right now as he speaks to us. And may these words be quickened to our hearts, Lord, as we hear his word, your word, Lord. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I'm also red. Can you get a new battery for that? I'm red, and so, so I think you can hear me now. The the mic, the I have a red light, but I think Ed's getting a a battery. Okay. So this is our gospel. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sins through the death of Jesus Christ, bringing reconciliation to the Father. It's that homecoming, that welcome home moment of Luke 15 and resulting in new life by the Holy Spirit. And so our call is away from sin and towards righteousness and all that is done in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I will just change my battery now so it's not a distraction midway through. Okay, it brings back memories. I see this, this shape of battery. I just think of that. And then the gospel verse um, from Hebrews 2, 14 to 15. Since the children have flesh and blood, he, that's Jesus, too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. Right, just part of the benefits, the blessing of the gospel, we have no fear of death. Jesus has defeated death. When, we, when our bodies give out, we fall asleep. That's the word in scripture. So our bodies will wear out, but we will never die, thanks to Jesus Christ. Okay. We're in a, a new series, if, if you weren't here last week, Living in the Light of Eternity. And this week it's Keep Your Head, Timothy, which we'll read in um, chapter three. Chapter 4, verse 5, I think it is. So just a review of some themes in this series, what we're looking at. Probably about six messages, I think. Oh, I'm gone next week. Pastor Darcy will be preaching. And then after that, about three more um, messages in this series. So how to live in the present with eternity in mind, just as we're looking forward to the day. Um, what will it be like when Jesus returns and reigns? Some of what we looked at last year, last week and what to expect here on earth as the end approaches. And a review of last week. This was the good news last week. When Jesus comes again, he will make all things new. Okay? There will be peace, rest, relief, and comfort for us as his kingdom is established, and God will be with us forever. So we're looking forward to the new. Um, but today is, well, in the meantime, before the new comes, God, what do you want us to do? So 2 Timothy 3, starting at verse 10. This is Paul addressing Timothy. You, however, know all about my teachings, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love and endurance, persecutions, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra, the persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them, 
In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evildoers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you, from whom you have learned it. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And then jumping into chapter 4. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship. Do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. And this is Paul speaking about the end of his life. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering. And the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. And this is the word of the Lord. And you might have noticed, there's at least two references to the return of Jesus Christ in there. Um, this is in chapter 4. In the presence of God in Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing, okay, all these instructions come. And then what he says at the end, too, that the crown he will, he will be rewarded on that day. Again, it's the return of Jesus Christ. So all these instructions to Timothy, and at least twice, remember the Lord is returning. Um, So we always want to keep that in mind as we listen to the instructions. And here are the instructions, just a summary of what we're going to look at today. There's a call for patience and endurance. There's a reliance and a, I'd say, a clinging to the Word of God. There's an awareness of false teaching and of people falling away. And there's a call to faithfully continue the work entrusted to you, whatever your, your specific assignment is. So that's what we're looking at today. So the first thing we see from Paul's example and his instructions is that call to endure. For example, verse 14, he says, continue in what you have learned. And then he uses his own life as an example. He talks about his own faith and patience and love and endurance in verse 10. So Paul sets his own life to Timothy as an example for how to endure. And we learn from other passages. Paul has known Timothy a long time. He talks about his infancy there. In some other passages, he talks about his mother and his grandmother, and he sort of tracks his his faith journey. Um, So Paul has seen Timothy mature and grow in the faith. And his simple instruction to him is continue. Continue in the faith as you have been doing. And this call for endurance, you find it many places in the New Testament, just to, to stand firm. For example, Jesus, Luke 21, 19, he's describing what it would be like in the end times, in the last days, as things begin to shake. And he says, stand firm and you will win life. Or more literally, stand firm and you will possess your souls. So we're called to endure and we're called to stand firm. Okay, that's throughout the New Testament. But it's also very clear we're standing firm and we're enduring in the midst of persecution and suffering. That there will be opposition. And again, Paul references his own life. In verse 11, he talks about persecution and sufferings. And he lists the cities, Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. Um, And you can read all about that in the book of Acts. You can see just Paul's life and his missionary work. And I might have used this expression before. I borrowed it from someone else. But nearly every city Paul went to, there was a revival and there was a riot. Okay, each time. You know, where people came to faith and there were many conversions, there was often trouble and a riot. I think the one place where it didn't happen was Athens. He made very few converts, and there wasn't really any trouble. 
But everywhere where there were a lot of converts and people came to faith in Jesus Christ, um, there was opposition there. That was Paul's experience. Now, Paul's life is an extreme one in terms of what he had to go through. We won't all have just exactly what he had. But the word there in verse 12 is that everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. That's the word today. So the message today is more than just continue and endure. It's continue and endure and know that there you will face opposition. Okay, It is guaranteed. The reason why I could go into a lot of it, I'm going to do a, a message just on spiritual warfare just in these times, but there are forces out there, spiritual forces, who are opposed to the lordship of Jesus Christ. Okay, There's a resistance um, to his lordship, and these forces operate through people, through institutions, and they will come against the followers of Jesus Christ. They can also act independently, like demonic oppression or harassment too. But anyway, speaking about, about the world and dealings with human beings, Jesus talked about it before, John 15, 18. Do not be, or if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. So in a way, it's not personal. It's, there's an opposition to Jesus, and therefore there's an opposition to the followers of Jesus and the work of Jesus that we're called to do. Um, so we can expect this. And the book of Nehemiah, I referenced it before, it's a good case study in dealing with opposition. Because you see, they're rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, and there's intimidation and distraction and opposition from Sanballat and Tobias. And there's a third name as well, too, in there. But you can see, they're doing the work of the Lord, but there's people trying to stop them. Um, and yet, they're able to endure and faithfully continue. So, um, recommended reading, the book of Nehemiah, but the first six chapters, you can see that. People trying to stop them from doing the work of the Lord. Now, how to keep your head in all this? Because that's the message title. Keep your head. Um, First, there's the words of Jesus, okay? Like, don't be surprised if the world hates you. Um, and then once we've done that, there are several encouragements in the New Testament, and I've just selected these two. So when you're facing trouble for the sake of Jesus Christ, because you obey him, James 1, 2 to 4, consider it pure joy. Oh, okay, joy. My brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And then Acts 5.41. This is after they just had a beating. Okay, they just had a beating, and it says, the apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering, disgrace for the name. Okay. So it is praising God and giving thanks and continuing to surrender your lives to him. Okay, that's one of the ways which will help you through this when you face the persecution and opposition. Okay. Um, as I say, I'll talk about spiritual warfare in another message, but this, this is a good start. Now, one caution in this as well, too. If you read 1 Peter 2 and 1 Peter 4, it's very important that if you're suffering, you're suffering for doing good. That's commendable before God. If you suffer for doing what is right, you get a reward. If you suffer and you're not doing what's right, you don't get a reward. Uh, and 1 Peter 4.19 just finishes with this. So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. So we can expect to face opposition, but we want to make sure it's because we're obeying God. Because you can just be making trouble for yourself, right? You can invite opposition when it's not in obedience to God. And there's no reward for that. But there is for, um, for suffering for doing good. The other thing to remember, too, we're talking about it's often people opposing us, the world or institutions. A couple of good reminders that we don't want to have a sinful response when we face persecutions. And here's some, maybe some familiar words from Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 44 to 45. And Romans, similar words, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. And I would just emphasize today that God means it. He really does mean it. Okay? And I, again, I don't know just that we always respond that way, but that is clearly God's call. Okay? There's no gray area there. And there's a warning also in Matthew 12, 39, that we will give an account for any empty words we say or any sort of careless words we say. So we want to watch our speech and how we respond when we face opposition. So expect opposition, and also, right, we want to have a godly response. Okay. 
And this is a safeguard. This stops you from being bitter and having negativity and unforgiveness and offense. If you go here, okay, you, you can't stay bitter. If you pray for them, Lord, bless them. You know how to bless them. <laughs> Something like that, even that. It's just you're, you're praying for them and not taking offense. So expect opposition. Endure it with great patience and have a godly response um, when we encounter it. So that's the first call and instruction to stand firm. And for another way in which we do that, the second point is to be in the word. Okay? If we're going to continue and stay strong, we need the word of God. You see what Paul writes to Timothy? All scripture is God-breathed and is useful to, for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Okay, that's verses 16 and 17. And there are several descriptions about the, the word of God, what it is and what it does. Okay, here's five, or five points anyway. So the word of God is food. We feed upon it. That's Matthew 4, 4, and Deuteronomy, Jesus quoting Deuteronomy 8, 3. Jesus says that his words are spirit and their life. Okay. From the book of Hebrews, the word of God is living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Psalm 119, the word of God is, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And also in Psalm 119 and some other places, the word of God is eternal. It stands firm forever. Okay. So you put a few of these together. It's a light and it's eternal. It's like it's a light that will never go out. It's a light that will always be on. And just there's other things you can do with that, with that revelation there. So anyway, the Bible is more than just information. Just, just so you know that, maybe you're already convinced of that. And it's even more than instructions, even though it has instructions for, for how to live your life and to be in relationship. It's food. It's life for us, okay? And there's spiritual power within the Word of God. And the higher regard you have for it, the more it will impact your life. Now, just say it this way. There's a connection between authority and power. When you make the word of God the authority in your life, that's where you will see its power, right? Because you have a proper reverence for it. So when it's the authority, it will come with power. And that's how it will impact your life. So it has spiritual power. It's food. It nourishes us. But it's also very practical. Because we read today that it is useful. I like that word useful. Okay, it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Okay? It will tell you what to do and how to put it into practice. Okay? And I like that word training because uh, it's, it's helpful because it speaks to the fact that the Christian life is learning by doing. You take what the word says, you put it into practice kind of repeatedly, and you learn. You learn God's ways. Hebrews 5.14, kind of a similar word, talking about solid food there. Um, solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So that's the goal, or one of the goals of putting it into practice. You can determine, ah, okay, that's good, and that's evil. Right? We want to grow and mature in that. I was talking before about the word being enduring and standing firm. In Matthew 7, Jesus teaches a, a parable about uh, a wise man who builds his house on a solid rock, right? And what he's teaching there is that building your house on a solid rock is like putting his words into practice, right? It will stand firm, will endure the storms. So again, it's believing it, but then it's applying it as well, acting upon it. And I would uh, also add in just declaring and proclaiming, speaking out loud the word of God. Okay, that's how you find the strength of it. And that's how it has power in your life. If it stays as information, okay, it will not have power for you. Or say maybe or limited power, I don't want to tie God's hands, but you know what I mean. It will impact your life, okay, as you believe it and apply it. We also see the word of God is useful for rebuking and correcting. Okay, that means in a helpful way, we call out each other's sins when we see them in their lives. Right. Now, that is a surprise to some Christians, or maybe not to all. I just, I'm just aware that it is, it is a surprise. Um, you mean we point out other people's sins? According to the word of God, we do. But in a helpful way and as a servant. And uh, the Matthew 7 teaching, it starts out with, judge not, lest ye be judged. Um, some people just stop there and say, we don't judge. But if you read that 
Jesus' lesson there. It's about helpful correction, but coming in as a servant to your brother and sister and losing any superiority, taking any plank out of your own eye. Okay, and then come alongside, but you're still helpfully pointing out sin in the person's life because you want the best for them. Okay? So this is what we're called to do. That's the call. Use the word to identify sin in people's lives as a way to help them. We don't call out sin in people's lives who aren't believers. Right? If you're not a follower of Jesus Christ, we can't expect you to follow Jesus Christ. Paul talks about that in 1 Corinthians 5. So we all want to be in the word. That's, I'm still on point two here. Each of us personally and also as a, as a community, we want to be in the word. And this talking about the word and applying it, there's obedience to this, but there's also preparation. Because one day we're going to reign with Jesus. And so in the meantime, we're learning God's ways. We learn what righteousness is. We learn God's ways. And one day he entrusts us with authority. That's another message. Uh, so the word of God keeps us strong, also prepares us for future responsibilities. Okay, things to do. I'm going to list some things here which maybe you're already doing, but if some people are just like, ah, I don't know how to start. You know, I just, I want to read the Bible. What do I do with it? One thing you can do, there's a one-year Bible out there. And so it's just, it's a, a 365 Bible reading plan so that you will read the entire Word of God. That is, a, maybe you've done that, but that's a good way to start, just so you've, you've seen all the words of God. Some, some books you might not get to as much, you know, going forward, but then you read the whole Word. Outside of that, so my recommendation, read a full book at a time. You know, read all through John. Read all through Galatians. Read all through Exodus. Just kind of, so you're not getting to scattered pieces here and there. Although the one-year Bible does that, but in a way to bring you through the whole Bible. But outside of the one-year Bible, I would say go through a book because then you build upon what you've built yesterday. You can also read a, a, the same portion, the same chapter, just even three days in a row. Because day three, even though it's familiar, I believe God speaks to you sometimes differently. Right? Just, oh, you know, I read this. The, the day three of it, there were new things that God had to say through the same words. You can also read it out loud. And you can also journal your thoughts and reactions as you read. But this is, if you're not sure what to do with Bible reading, these are some of the things you can do. And you can ask me for more things as well, too. I'll say this, too. If you have a devotional book that you use, something like our daily bread, okay, keep it. Keep doing that. But also be in the word yourself where it's just you and God, you know, and his word. Um, and the same if you listen to any sermons or speakers online, keep doing that, but also take time where it's just you, God, and his word, where it's not mediated by another person, even though if the person's a godly teacher, okay? So you want to have your own communication with him, just you and him. Okay, so that's a major key for how we carry ourselves in these days, in the midst of what's happening and what will happen to the word, in the world, we want to hang on to the word and be continually strengthened by it. So this is what Paul said to Timothy 2,000 years ago, and it's still good instructions today, is to be in the word of God. Okay, this is, I think this, there's a simplicity to it. God's unchanging word, okay? There's just something, I'd almost say easy about that, uncomplicated. Now third, in terms of our instructions, this is not so much what we do, but it's something to be aware of. We saw in chapter 4, verse 3. People will not put up with sound doctrine. So there's a call for us to continue. And there's a call for us to endure. And then there's a, a prediction that a time will come when people will not, other people will not continue and endure. Okay, they will, verse 4, they will turn their ears away from the truth. They will not want to listen to it anymore. And it seems clear from the reading that these are people who were Christians, you know, who previously held to sound doctrine, but at a certain point, they no longer put up with it. They turn away from it. So this will happen in the church. It's also expressed in Matthew 24. It's Jesus' long discourse on, on the end times there. He says, Matthew 24, 12, the love of many will grow cold. Okay? And that's the agape love. The of many will grow cold. So I believe he's talking about the church there. Um, that the, their love will grow cold. They will turn away. And continuing, continuing on with this passage, it's, uh, I'm not sure what verse it was, they will gather other teachers who will tell them what they want to hear. So in terms of people just drifting away, it's interesting, most people don't do it solo. 
they usually find some other teacher, guru, speaker to follow. And they start following someone else. So it's usually, even rarely, <laughs> not an independent rebellion. It's some other uh, teacher that they start listening to. So, I believe we're witnessing this now. Maybe this isn't news, but, um, that, that this will happen in the last days. I mean, there are churches who no longer preach the gospel or who have a different gospel, who don't believe the word of God or just there's no mention of sin, repentance, and forgiveness. It just, it's something to be aware of. You don't want to get too critical and always watching them, but just God warns um, in his word that this will happen. We want to guard against this. We also want to, if we know the person, try to bring them back into sound doctrine if we can, if they will receive it. So, how do we guard against that? If this will happen in the church, people in the church will turn away. Okay, well, a couple of things that, that we already looked at speak to that. The first, I think, is to expect opposition. I don't think this is the only reason, but I think one reason why some people turn away is because they encounter opposition. Okay, where they don't realize it, but their friendship and their loyalty is with the world. And the world makes a demand upon them, and unfortunately, they cave in, and they please the world. Okay, that is one reason, I think, why people drift away. Once the gospel becomes offensive, then they no longer want to be attached to the gospel. John 12, 42 to 43. This is um, the triumphal entry, you know, Hosanna, Jesus coming on a donkey. And it talks about there are people who believed in Jesus. They believed his message, but they didn't follow him because they were afraid of, of the Pharisees and they loved the praise of men more than God. So that is one reason, it's not the only reason, why people drift away. They would rather have human approval than God's approval. Okay? It's definitely an attack to, to, to feel like ashamed of being a Christian. You know, that kind of comes at us. And the second thing, again, just to be aware of, um, in terms of staying strong, guarding against this, is to know the Word, okay? to be in the Word. Okay? That will keep you strong from drifting away. And also to receive this as God's Word. Again, as I said, personally... My conviction is this is God's word, and it's an authority in my life. As you know, not everybody talks about it that way. There are, there are some people who call it stories about God, for example. I won't name. Like, there's a famous pastor. There's this, that's, that's how he describes the word of God. These are stories about God. It's like, that's a little bit of a weak view of it, in my opinion. I mean, he doesn't have to agree with me, but I want to agree with God that it is his word. Okay, so why does this happen? Why do people drift away? What motivates them? Well, verse 3 says it's to suit their own desires. So, in a way, it's not a complicated answer. Why do people fall away? Okay. Because they, they miss the call to, de to deny the self, or they don't say to God, not my will, Lord, um, but yours be done. And so, turning away from the truth, they are going after what they want. And the passage also talks about false teachers and deceivers. Now, both can be going on. The person can be deceived, they can be under a veil, and they are going after what they want. Now, for us, again, we want to take a warning from this. Um, there's a helpful insight here, I think, into the essence or the root of sin. And I'd say we're taught that sin looks like this. I don't care if it's right or wrong, as long as I get what I want. If that is what, again, this is for us, the caution. If that is what's driving you, if that's what's motivating you, that's probably sin. That's probably selfishness of some kind. But that's what we're told in this passage today, to suit their own desires. So when we, so yeah, we're, we're capable of, of that, right? We guard against that. So I don't want to say this with any superiority. But that, I think, is part of the essence, the root of sin. As long as I get what I want, that drive, that, there's a force to it as well, too. So that's not surrender. That's not obedience. That's what we want. Okay, so false teachers, false teaching have always been there. Jesus in his day warns about that as well too. But we're told there will be an increase in them in the last days. Um, again, Matthew 24 talking about that in the last days more and more. Okay, and then the fourth point. Just getting back to our instructions. We were told to continue in the faith. Continue in the word. And the fourth point is simply continue in the work that you've been called to do. Okay, whatever God has assigned you to do, whatever your specific assignment is, continue in that. We see for Timothy specifically, it's, this is for him, this is maybe not for everyone. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. And then later in verse 5, 
Um, do the work of an evangelist. Discharge all duties of your ministry. So again, this relates to Timothy's specific call. He's a pastor. He's an evangelist. Um, but the principle applies to all of us. Okay? Whatever you're doing, keep at it to the end. Uh, once again, Paul testifies to his own life here. He says, I've fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. Okay? He has continued on to the end. Even in prison, he's still evangelizing. Right? So Paul continues his work to the end. And what he anticipates is his reward when Jesus returns, which is, again, what we always want to have in mind. So in a, in a very helpful way, I pray you can see the simplicity of this. And I'll just take our church for an example. There are things we do here. There are weekly routines and seasonal routines and things we do every year, okay? And we're probably going to continue them, most of them. And I believe that that is our call, to keep doing the things we are doing. Now, we want to be open to the Holy Spirit. He may lead us into doing a new thing. He may lead us into laying down something that we've been doing. But in general, I think it's just helpful and healthy for a church to keep doing what we're doing. And I believe that overall that is our call, um, both as a church um, and for us individually, personally. I just say this that it might be a matter of personal preference. But I know there are some churches where they're always doing the new thing. And they're getting excited about it. I'm not saying that's wrong. It's just maybe personal preference. But, but for me, that would just be a little bit unsettled. You get excited about the new thing. And it lasts a year and a half, two years, and excited about the new, new thing. Anyway, if they're serving and obeying God, God bless them. But it's just, I, I see a call to just kind of Keep doing what we're doing and be open for, for new things that the Lord may call us to. So that's our church. Back to your personal life. Whatever you sense is God's call for you. That's what he wants you to keep on doing. Right? And um, God can change that and he can promote you. He can change the call he has. But it will usually be based on, on what you've already been doing. He'll prepare you for some new assignment. And he'll give you an opportunity to show faithfulness in another area. Now, if you haven't found your assignment, maybe that's no one. But if you're not sure, like, I'm not sure what, what my call is. You know, I'm not sure what my assignment is. Here's a way you can start. Support someone else's call. Okay? So if you're not sure what your ministry is, support someone else's ministry. Start there. Okay? Learn faithfulness until God shows you what you are supposed to do. And many of you are doing that. Just, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do, but I'll help this person. And then I think even in that, you're fulfilling your call. And maybe one day God has a new assignment for you as well, too. Okay. So this is helpful advice for us. Because among the many temptations that we face, one of them is losing focus. One of them is not finishing strong in the end. I think of a lot of those Old Testament kings, like Solomon and Asa. There's a few others like who lived a godly life most of their life. And then towards the end, they fall away. Isaiah, another one, too. It's sad. So we want to finish well want to finish strong, want to keep our focus. And Jesus teaches about this in Matthew 24, a lot of things in Matthew 24. About the end, he talks about the day and the hour of his return is unknown. And this is what he says. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Okay. So it's a clear, simple message. It will be good for that person if they're doing what they were assigned to do when the master returns. Now, if you read the rest of the following verses, you see there's a warning in there as well, too. There's another scenario. If that servant <coughs> turns away and starts getting drunk and treating other servants abusively, there's a severe punishment waiting for him. So we want to keep going to the end and keep our focus the Lord calls us and enables us. Okay, so I can just summarize on this point, the encouragement um, to you today from the reading. The work you do has value, and there's a reward waiting for you. Whatever your call is, whatever your spe specific assignment is, and it can change. You know, we got a, a new ministry, you know, the, the Saturday women's, um, women's breakfast. I mean, that has come up now, but generally, yeah, we'll keep doing what we're doing. We're called to continue to be faithful, and there's a reward waiting for you. And so from that, we want to stay faithful. Galatians 6, 9, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Okay. Now, lastly, just as a finishing thought, 
these are good and helpful instructions, I believe. So Paul speaking to Timothy, but we're kind of taking the lesson for ourselves. But there's something else in this passage which speaks to the attitude that we want to carry in our hearts. Because I said at the beginning, you always want to keep in mind Jesus' return. How do you keep that in mind? How do you keep that strong? And I believe that there's an answer that we read in the last verse, uh, verse 8. As Paul talks about his own reward that he's looking forward to. He says that this reward is for not only for me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. So how do you make sure you keep this in mind? It's when you're longing for Jesus to come back. When you have that longing for his return. When you have an accurate idea as well of what will happen when he returns. That's how you keep focused okay, on his return. Um, I believe that's, that's what this speaks to. That in order to carry out these instructions, okay, you have to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Because otherwise this becomes stuff to do. Without the relationship, it's stuff to do. But with the relationship, as you're waiting for him to return, um, then there's a joy to it. And this is spoken of in the passage as well, too, this relationship with Jesus. Because verse 12 talks about persecution, and he says, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus. So you're living a godly life in Christ Jesus, okay, in relationship with him. And also verse 15, Scripture makes us wise for salvation through faith in Jesus. And as Paul gives his commission to Timothy, he says, in the presence of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, so when the, with Jesus here as a witness, I give you this commission. So it's that relationship, it's that constant connection to Jesus, you know, which brings you through this, which allows you to continue and stay strong. It's your personal relationship with Jesus which will stir you and motivate you um, because that's who you're serving, that's who you're working for, and that's who gives you strength to do the things he calls you to do. John 15, you know, Jesus says, remain in me because apart from me you can do nothing. So we want to get the practical side of this and we want to get the relational side of this. Okay? If you only have the one, I believe it's unsustainable. Okay? It's really hard to continue. Um, it is hard to keep serving Jesus if you never talk to him. Okay? It's just hard to, to keep that going, to stay motivated. And also, it's hard to be close to him if you're not doing what he says. Okay? It's hard to have closest to Jesus if you resist his will. Okay? And it's hard to keep going you know, and staying strong if you don't talk to him. So we want both, the relational and the practical side. Okay? But when you know Jesus, there's a joy um, to the work, doing what he's called you to do as we endure and co-labor with him. So I'm going to finish with a scripture from James, which, which summarizes a lot of these thoughts. This is James 1.12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life the Lord has promised to those who love him. So it's for those who love him. Okay. That's, again, that relationship with Jesus, how you anticipate his return. And as our hymn goes, as one of the hymns we sing, uh, we serve him because we love him. I will serve thee because I love thee. Okay. And we are really looking forward to his return one day. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Okay. Lord Jesus, we want to be in relationship with you, Lord. We want to have that relationship, God. We want to be obeying your instructions as well. We want the practical side. What do you want us to do, God? And so, God, I pray that we would be faithful to our calling. I pray that it also be clear for our church here and for us individually as well, Lord. What do you want us to do in these days? In these days which look like the last days, Lord, what do you want us to focus on and, and have as priorities, God? And Lord, we want to be open to your Holy Spirit, Lord. If you want to change our assignment, change what we do, again, as personally or as a congregation, Lord, we want to hear from you. We want to obey. Uh, but we also just want to be faithful to keep doing what we're doing. I'm trusting that's what you've called us to do, Lord. Lord, so thank you for the simplicity of this. Thank you for the, the, the clarity, the simplicity of your word. You just tell us, just stay grounded in the word. Lord. Thank you that the words are a spirit. They are life to us. They nourish us, Lord. We need that. Lord, we want to stay humble in this, Lord. We want to be depending on your word and depending on each other as we walk this out, Lord. And Lord, we pray that we would be witnesses as well, that in our witness, that people would see the hope that we have, Lord. Your word from uh, 1 Peter, to always be prepared to give an answer that you, for the hope that you have, but doing so with gentleness and respect. So Lord, may our hope of your return drive us to, to do the work we do and also be part of our witness that we share with others. We pray you would lead us in this, in Jesus' name.
Amen. Okay, I'm going to call the praise team forward for one last song. Good song anticipating Jesus' return. Then I'm going to speak a benediction. And then after the service, if you would like prayer for any reason, um, up at the front, it'll be Nola and myself. Just We'll be on the prayer team for a small need or a big need. Um, we're there and we're available. standing on that rousing finish, hear the, the blessing of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday. Prayer up at the front. Coffee and fellowship.